Uh, let me read the uh, scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, verse 1 through 13. Okay? Let me read it for you. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, without being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the honest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that the whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the law, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. <coughs> For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we command that ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer, answer them with glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. What is the earthly tabernacle? Our body is made of what? Or dust of the ground. That's why when our body give up our breast and our heart stop, then in three days or five days, our body has to be buried in the earth to return to the earth. All right? It is the destiny of our body, whether Christian or not. Every man must die. But after that, there shall be judgment, as Scripture said. Our earthly house of this tabernacle should be dissolved. All right? Somebody said, you know, our body is consists of almost 100 atoms. You know what's atoms? Atoms. Then when our body dies, all those atoms dissolve to one another, disappear. All right? So even though our body dissolved, our soul and spirit is still there. Invisible. Invisible, right? For when God made man and woman, as made with the dust of ground, you know, to make them bo their body, and uh, breathe into the, their nostrils, you know, the uh, breath of life, man became living soul. So our soul is our self. Our body is a tabernacle. Our body is a house where our soul is still living. We must understand that. Our salvation, when we receive Jesus Christ, repentance, with repentance and believing Jesus Christ, believing his blood took away our sin, cleansed our conscience, you know, then 
the salvation is of what? Soul. Soul. You must know that, okay? Uh, that's why King David is a uh, you know, very famous king, very good king of Israel. He's, you know, praise the Lord saying that. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord means what? It's time for you to be blessed because you saved my soul. Because you gave me eternal life. That's why you blessed me abundantly. That's why it's time your name should be blessed. Lord, I bless your name, O oh, my soul. That means I bless you, God. All right? All that is with me, within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know why? Through Jesus Christ, you know, God gave us many benefits. First one, forgives all our iniquities. And also heals all our diseases. Who said we believe? And also redeem our life from destruction. Redeem, deliver our soul from the hell, from destruction. He pay for all our sins. That redeem means pay for all our sins. He purchased us and crown us with loving kindness and tender mercy and also satisfies our mouth with good things. Whatever we ask him in his will, for the will of God, everything shall be answered to you. All right? And last one is your youth is renewed like the eagles. Your youth, even though your body, you know, getting old, a lot of wrinkles, you know, kind of things, but your youth is renewed like the eagle, regardless of, you know, age, right? Regardless of age. Even though you are so young, if you don't trust in the Lord, you know, you're always weird, weary and faint, all right? And that's why these days young men, women, they used to drink what? Power drink, a lot of caffeine, right? Power drink. I never drink it, even though I'm 65 years old. Why? My youth always renewed, you know, through the power of God and the Holy Spirit. All right? It is the promise of the Lord. All right? So Apostle Paul encouraged the saints of Corinthian church. For which cause we faint not. We never faint not. We not faint at all. But though our outward man, what is outward man? Body. Outward man perish. At the inward man, our soul, inward man is renewed Day by day. I feel that. Every day, I am renewed. I am renewed. When I take off my body to be clothed with immortal, not dying, you know, anymore, and incorruptible body, I shall be just like a 33 years old Jesus Christ in youth. I believe so, because I, my inner man in a man, I feel very young, renewed every day, day by day. People day by day getting old, my inner man is day by day being renewed. Just like an eagle. It's the words of God. Even in our suffering, uh, high, a light affliction, it cannot compare to our glory, what we receive when Jesus appeared to take us, us home, okay, to heaven. So, even though we're looking around with the eyes, what's going on in the world, we understand the things which are seen are temporal, momental, temporal. Just like a fog in the morning. 
right? Fog in the morning, when sun rise, fog disappear. Jesus Christ is kind of uh, compared to the rising sun. All these worldly things, just like a fall, okay, including men and women. When Jesus come again, all disappear, just like at the time of Noah, you know, too many people, a lot of people living there, but they are corrupted, they are wicked. That's why when God sent in a flood, they're all gone, except, you know, Noah and his family. Same thing will happen. Then Jesus said, when I come again, exactly the same as the time of Noah. So many people are busy, you know, eat and drink, and getting married, getting married too. You know, build house and, you know, demolish house, new house, whatever. All the things around, you know, in the world right now, all these, you know, things that there are sin is temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Spiritual things, even though we cannot see with our physical eyes, but exist. For example, God, we cannot see him, right? But we can see with the spiritual eyes. Except a man born again cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man born again of water and spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh give a birth to flesh. As your mother gave birth to you as a flesh. But spirit gave a birth to spirit. See? Important. Apostle John, he just, you know, blessed the one man of God, his name is Gaius. He said that, Elder unto the well beloved Gaius. Hey, my beloved Gaius, you know. Apostle John is the elder. I love you in the truth. Beloved, I wish all above all things that thou may prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prosper, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, even you walk in the truth. I have no, no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Yeah, as the soul of Gaius, Gaius, good, okay? So as Gaius, good. You may prosper and you may be in health. And that means our soul must be renewed. Our soul should, be, should prosper. Not our body, not our life, our soul. Because our soul is ourself, right? Myself. That's why. To prosper myself, my soul should prosper. How the soul prosper? To prosper, to make a prosper body, you need success in material world, right? How let your soul prosper? The only way is to uh, to obey the words of God by truth. Right truth. So the Bible says, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and through unfeigned love of the brethren. That means what? When we read the Bible, words of God, we obey. We obey words of God, then it is a way to prosper our soul. For example, you, you are in affliction. You know, not in good condition, not in good, you know, environment. Even though you are in such kind of negative situation, if you try to obey the words of God, rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances, and pray continually, then your soul is going to be purified. All right? 
You must, you know, divide you as three parts. One body, another one soul, another one spirit. Your spirit should be filled with the Holy Spirit through prayer in the words of God. Right? Then, when your soul prosper, you shall be proper in the truth. Then, you are to be in good health. It is our body is final. Not making you know, soul prosper if you try you know, to make uh, many muscles on your belly, okay? Just like, you know, movie stars, you know, they pride themselves uh, like this, you know? Uh, just take off their, their, you know, shirts, you know, showing their, their, their body, right? A lot of muscle. No, it's not. Our soul should prosper first, all right? Only way to make our soul prosper is to obey the truth through the Holy Spirit then, when our soul is pure, when our soul prosper, then it's the time for us to make unfeigned love our brothers and sisters. Right? Then, your face also shall be changed. We're rejoicing. All right? Yeah, that's why, you know, your body is kind of what? Your body is kind of house where your soul lives in. A kind of house where no man live, right? Hunted out. Why? Because no law, no, no owner, right? Oh, sometimes, you know, drug addict, you know, alcoholics live in the house. How, the, how it look like the, the house? You, may, you can imagine, right? No cleaning, right? No maintain. You know, love the smell, corrupting. See? Yeah, it depends upon, you know, how the house look like. It depends on what? How your soul look like. Your face. How are you going to, can you, you know, show your face so happy? Your soul should be happy, right? Your soul. Money is temporal, right? So it's very important. Your soul is very important. When Jesus come, we have to take up our body to wear incorruptible and immortal body, okay? It is the day of Christ. When Jesus appears in the, in the air, he shall call us, hey, come up hither, calling our name with you know, trample, trample, trumpet of a God, all right? And um, the voice of Archangel, he shall just appear from heaven. It's a time for us. In one eye twinkle light, like, we shall be changed. It is the promise of God, okay? Now all, you know, the men of God just, you know, testify their soul, praise the Lord, because they are saved. Um, King David just confessed God. I understand the Lord God, you put a lot of treasures in the belly of the worldly people. And you allow them to have many children, and you allow them to give inheritance to your children, to their, their children. But I, but I, I, when I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. That means what? Awake means when he, in the day, his resurrection day, even though he was a king, he never regard, you know, his belongings, you know, treasures. He always concentrated, his soul should be changed exactly the same as Jesus Christ. Christian means what? Christ and I am nothing. I A N. Christ plus I am nothing. I deny myself. My soul, deny my soul, only just, you know, worship the Lord in me because he is my owner. Before I became Christian, I was a bad man sinner. That's why my body, you know, looks ugly, right? 
But since the Lord Jesus became a new owner in my body, my body also has been changed day by day, renewed. Because our Lord, I receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior means what? Oh, you are my Lord in me. Take care of my body too, all right? Not only my spirit. It's very important. Unfortunately, many people, wounded people, unsaved people think their body is themselves. That's why they paint, you know, many things, you know? Yes. And so they iron the face to just, you know, stretch their, you know, wrinkles. All right? And so to just eliminate wrinkles, they just like this, all right? And some woman, the, you know, belly button over here. You know that? Stretch too much, you know, to, um, because hate their wrinkle, okay? They, they know oh, their bodies themselves, you know, the movie star, right? Look at Elizabeth Taylor. Many, many, you know, how to start when they, you know, getting old. Oh, you know why they just look so ugly? Because so much cosmetic surgery. Yeah, so they, their face just like, you know, no balance at all. They misunderstood. Their face is not them, you know. Their soul. They didn't take care of their soul. To take care of their soul, what? Confessing the sinner and receive Jesus Christ with repentance by faith. So that the blood of Jesus clean you know, conscience in their soul. That's the only way. All right? Individually, we have the hope of our own soul to be clothed with immortal and incorruptible body when Christ Jesus appears. We also have the hope to dwell in the new Jerusalem that shall come from, come down from heaven after the millennium of Christ Jesus to be our eternal home. And Apostle John saw it coming down from heaven, new Jerusalem. You know, the 12 foundation is all precious stone. And, the, you know, the street is pure gold, and the gate is made of pure pearl, and even wall is made of, you know, sapphire kind of things, all right? I don't remember the name of it, but, you know, a kind of precious stone. So we shall be in there forever. And Jesus said that, Jesus said that, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. The way I am, there you may be also. When Jesus was still leaving the, leaving the world, you know, his disciples, you know, with him, no worry and concern. You know, because everything was secured, you know, because of him. But Jesus said, I have to leave the world. There's so much, you know, trouble. Then Jesus says, don't be troubled, okay? You believe in God, then believe in me. I shall come back. Because my father has many mansions. 1,500 feet, 1,500 miles. And 1,500 miles, and height also 1,500 miles. Shoes from Miami to Niagara and Denver, kind of size, okay? It shall be our home, right? The born again Christian. So I don't own any house at, at, in, in, this, in this present time. I don't worry about that. My real house, eternal house in there. Don't worry about that. Don't be troubled, all right? Even though you don't have an earthly father, don't, don't, no problem. Your father in heaven. He owns all whole universe. If you believe that, you're not going to be trouble. All right? Always, you know, just call upon the name of Father and praise Him. Oh, my soul, praise, you know, bless my Father God. You know, praise my Lord. You, you know, are to do, you know, by faith, okay? And this is why Apostle Paul said, well, we walk by faith, not by sight. A born again Christian who has a hope in the Lord is coming. Only walk by faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance what you hope for.
for. You hope something in the future, right? If we believe that, that is real. That is real. If that is real, New Jerusalem, your eternal home is real in your life, nothing can you be fainting. Nothing can you be troubled. All right? So we are not walking by sight, but by faith. You know, that's why Apostle Paul encourages us to please the law, whether present or absent, whether we live or die, our body, okay? I'm talking about body, all right? Forward the day, looking forward day, expecting, right? Expect the day when we see the Lord Jesus, when he appears in the day of the rapture. He also encourages us to walk in the truth, living in the mortal body, believing his promised word so that we may be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. Even though we are saved by faith, by grace, okay? Everybody is saved. Only by faith we are saved. Nothing else. No work at all. But after we are saved, whatever we do with our body is connected to our reward. Reward, okay? When Jesus comes, when we be with him in the air, first thing we have to pass is what? Judgment seat of Christ. Then he will judge whatever we have done in the earth. All right? If it is made of gold, silver, and precious stone, never burnt out, never burned, it shall be rewarded to us. If we just, you know, um, build a house in, in heaven with uh, wood, hay, and stubble, that all those are, you know, bond, right? Bond. Then nothing. We are saved this like, naked body, you know, kind of thing. No reward. Uh, that's why, you know, the Bible says about what is faith. Faith. It's saying that what without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Even devil believe God is his existence, right? Yeah, we, first of all, we have to believe God exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, diligently seek him. We have to seek diligently, okay? Not only seek the money diligently, but also we seek the reward, all right? The reason we diligently you know, seek the business is to do will of God. We have to focus on the right thing, all right? That's why Jesus, Jesus appeared to Apostle John, and he spoke to him. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Yes, yeah, our salvation received by grace through faith freely, but we shall be rewarded according to our own work. This is the reason why we have to prepare the eternal reward while we are in earthly house, of this tabernacle that is corrupt of body. In the day of Christ, that is in the day, it's the day of a rapture, we have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in individual body according to that we have done, whether it is be good or bad. That means we can do good okay, or we can do bad. Before we enter the wedding of our Lamb, only gold, silver, and precious stone shall not be burnt to be rewarded. And wood, hay, and stubble shall be burnt for no reward, as testified by Apostle Paul. As Jesus said, what is our reward? Jesus said, he just make a parable. He just gave one pound each ten, ten and a servant, each of them, one pound. And he asked them, with one pound occupied, Occupy. 
make a business, one pound, okay? And he came back, the king, Jesus came back and called all the servants, ten servants, but only three, only three, you know, showed up. And first one he asked, how many pounds you gained? He said, I gained ten pounds. Then you have power to reign in ten cities. Ten cities means just like Los Angeles. Chicago, New York, okay? When Jesus comes back, still the earth exists. Still there, Los Angeles, this area, right? Yeah, Chicago, New York, everywhere in the world. Another one said, I gained five pounds with the one pound which you gave to me. Oh, you reign in ten, uh, five cities. Third man came, oh, I just, you know, hide in handkerchief, napkin, because I believe you are the one who makes something from nothing. And Jesus is going to ask them, you wicked servant. Hey, I give you one pound to the one who gained ten pounds. Then people say, oh, he already gained ten pounds. Yeah. The man has a lot, yet more. All right? And so he was, the third man was just called as a wicked servant at the judgment of sin. Occupy means what? Occupy means, for example, you just, we just enter the land, some land, right? Through the war, we victory, occupy the land, right? We have the sword of Holy Spirit. Where the sword of Holy Spirit, only one pound away, you know, it's more than that, too, but you know, just small Bible, just one pound. It's the sword of the spirit. With this, bring this, you know, you know, fight with the devil, and so win the soul. Then they shall be right, rewarded as a crown to reign in the earth with Jesus Christ. And that's why many people go to foreign land. Okay, yeah, the the, the country where the savages live in Papua New Guinea, right? Still, they eat the flesh of man, right? Yeah, that's the reason, to occupy the land. And that's why we just travel all around the world. That's why I traveled, you know, with this. All, you know, Latin countries, many Latin countries, Canada, you know, Philippines, China, Israel, many nations. Why? I want to seek my Lord waiting for his reward. All right? It should be done by my body. When you're young, it's a good time for you to do. I travel, you know, 40s and 50s, traveling mission field, preparing the, the, the reward. But a little, little bit, you know, difficult for me to do this these days, okay? I'm getting old, right? Before you're getting old, you understand what you're seeking for the reward, whenever you hear the words of God, the Holy Spirit will give you a message, what you're supposed to do, how you please God. In many ways, different from man and woman, many ways. So since our new owner in the body is Jesus Christ, He willing to remodel our body beautifully, Repair our body beautifully, you know, changing our behavior, changing our words, right? Spoken out of mouth, even our appearance, right? Because the devil was my owner in the past. Now, Jesus Christ is my owner of body. It's not my own. He purchased me. Paying his blood, okay? I'm not my own. I am he. Right? Nobody can be good other than Jesus Christ. He's the best owner. He's the best owner. So that's the reason why we are supposed to live in holiness. That's why Bible testifies of this. For in that 
she died. She died unto sin once, but in that she lived. She lives unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as the instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself, surrender yourself right, unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You know, how we are saved? First one, because we believe in Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, die for our sins. All sins engraved in our heart, in our conscience. When we believe in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus took away all our sins inside of us, not from the flesh, okay? Many people misunderstand. Inside of conscience. Secondly, as Jesus buried, we have to believe our body already buried with Jesus Christ. We are dead unto sin, as dead man cannot sin, right? And third one, as Jesus Christ rose again third day, we also rose again, our spirit, right? We believe that. So we act as Jesus Christ who rose again from the dead. I am resurrected. Our body already died, right? My saved soul, a born again spirit, expecting to wear eternally immortal, incorruptible body when Jesus comes. It is our hope. Whosoever a born again Christian, they have the same hope. That's why the day when die is the day when even their body begin with eternal life. All right? It is a faith. It is a faith. So, it's the reason why, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Father, thank you very much for your message. And so, thank you for giving us real hope so that we may not walk by sight, but walk by Wait. Receive our offering. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Amen. Amen.